At the slave auction market, a group of slaves wearing wooden signs and shackles on their limbs were led onto the platform, resembling animals. Below, a crowd of slave owners prepared to participate in the bidding. Bashiatus, with a newfound confidence, raised his hand and eagerly spent 29 copper coins to purchase all the slaves on the stage. His motive was solely to witness the defeated and desolate expression on Salonius's face. Bringing back these slaves to the training grounds, trainer Inamaus took charge of transforming them into formidable fighters. Simultaneously, General Glaber's wife was invited to the training grounds. With the aim of strengthening their connection and facilitating her husband's upward trajectory, Lucretia proposed the idea of personally selecting a slave as her own plaything, pay a nominal amount to support training and basic living expenses. The gladiator would then become her exclusive possession. A newcomer emerged and made a name for himself in the arena, which brought great glory to his owner. Lithia was internally ecstatic, unaware of the newcomer's exceptional strength. Under Batiatus' comprehensive display, it came as no surprise that Ilithia chose Segovis. With this opportunity, Ilithia frequently visited the training grounds to admire Segovis' charisma. In retrospect, Ilithia's choice proved to be a good one. Among these newcomers, Segovi showed remarkable growth and significant progress in his martial skills. Ilithia couldn't hide her inner joy. Her intense vanity urged her to flaunt herself in front of her wealthy friends. Lucretia was pleased as well since it provided her with an opportunity to socialize with more high-ranking nobles, paving the way for her husband. Within a few days, a group of elegantly dressed wealthy women arrived at the mansion. They gathered in a circle, savoring fine wine, engaging in discussions about their little secrets, with hints of tension in their words. Apart from the competitive spirit, there were also sharp remarks, which surprised Ilithia regarding her gladiator. However, for those who had never set foot in the arena, it was the Capua champion Spartacus whom they admired. So, they eagerly requested a close encounter to admire his impressive figure. And thus, Spartacus appeared before the wealthy women, allowing them to examine him up close. What they didn't know was that, Ilithia and Spartacus were sworn enemies. She directly drew blood on him with a knife constantly insulting and provoking him. Faced with Ilithia's humiliation, the stoic Spartacus retaliated fiercely. He would never forget that Glaber was indirectly responsible for his wife's death. Taking advantage of the situation, the wealthy women fueled the fire, leaving Ilithia utterly humiliated. After mocking her, they dispersed one by one. At that moment, Ilithia, who couldn't bear even a hint of disgrace, quietly began to plot her revenge. Well, I would not see my treated so. May I have words with Segovax before I take my leave? Segovis was brought before Ilithia, lured by fine wine, beautiful women, and the promise of freedom, to find the right moment to eliminate his nemesis, Spartacus. Meanwhile, the doctor was examining the recovery progress of the former champion, Crixus. Although he managed to cheat death, it would take time before he could return to the arena. Upon hearing the news, Batiatus cursed and grumbled in frustration. But the gladiatorial arena had already changed hands. Champion Spartacus undeniably took his place, becoming the leader of the training grounds. The doctor handed a list of medications to Batiatus. These were crucial for Crixus's recovery, but they came at a hefty price. Reluctant to spend money, Batiatus had no choice but to send his own slave, Usher, to make the purchase. Usher was once a gladiator himself, but an injury cost him a leg, leaving him as Batiatus's errand boy so Ashur will no longer be threatened with his life. Ashur had been bullied by Crixus in the past, so this was the perfect opportunity for revenge. He constantly urged Batiatus to sell off Crixus and generate funds. The expenses for Crixus's treatment were substantial, and it was uncertain if he could regain his former glory in the arena. Batiatus firmly disagreed, but Ashur persisted in his persuasion. Till now, he had struck a chord with Batiatus's greed, and the idea of selling Crixus advanced further in his mind. Lucretia and Naivia, standing nearby, overheard the conversation between the two. Upon learning that their own slaves were to be sold, Lucretia hurriedly approached her husband to intervene. However, Batiatus regarded them merely as profit-making slaves. If they had no value, it was necessary to cut losses in a timely manner. Naivia, by their side, was also extremely anxious and took a risk to find Crixus. So, Crixus went straight to Spartacus, who was training. His own injuries were of no concern to him as he directly confronted his opponent. However, after going through numerous life and death battles, Spartacus' swordsmanship had greatly surpassed his former self. After three rounds, he fell heavily injured and could no longer rise. 
he could only be helped up by others. Originally, he wanted to prove that his strength still remained, but the outcome was not as expected. Now Basiatus became even more determined to sell him. Spartacus, with a vacant gaze, sat in the bathhouse, reminiscing about his deceased wife. Suddenly, someone swiftly approached from behind and fiercely strangled him with a hemp rope, just as he was about to suffocate. Crixus heard the sounds of the struggle and rushed over in time to save him at all costs. After this incident, Basiatus erupted in anger. He knew it was instigated by Alithia. But in order to avoid ruining the fragile relationship they had built, they ultimately pretended to be oblivious to each other and resolved the situation. At this moment, Crixus' value was also recognized by Basiatus. That was the only bit of loyalty the slaves had, and the idea of selling him was abandoned. To serve as a warning to the slaves, Segovis was punished on the spot. Inside the slave mansion, a group of female slaves wore various masks, standing in a row for the wealthy women to choose from. One wealthy woman immediately selected a slave wearing a Diana mask. Lucretia couldn't help but admire her choice. The slave's name was Mira. Ever since the wealthy women witnessed Spartacus' prowess, knights and sleeping with their husbands were no longer satisfying. Licinia secretly came to the mansion, without her husband's knowledge, to request Spartacus to serve her. Lucretia readily agreed. After all, one must firmly grasp connections in high society. She also informed Licinia of the rules, wear the mask to conceal her identity, arrive punctually in three days without any entourage, to avoid being discovered by her husband. During the encounter, the mask must not be removed, even if she feels uncomfortable or in pain, and no sound should be made. The wealthy woman reluctantly agreed. While the two were engrossed in their conversation, Elithia suddenly arrived uninvited. Due to their previous unpleasant encounter, the wealthy woman made a few sarcastic remarks and left on pretense. Smart Elithia watched her leave with the mask, and immediately suspected that something was being concealed from her. With just a few words, she figured it out and on the surface, Elithia promised Lucretia not to betray her secret. However, who knows what tricks she might play behind the scenes. In the afternoon, Basiatus returned home, and Lucretia eagerly shared the news with him. Upon hearing that Spartacus was to serve someone as the god of war, Basiatus was delighted. The relationship with this wealthy woman was quite influential. If this connection could be solidified, his entry into politics would be within reach. However, Lucretia started to feel a bit worried. After all, Spartacus had a deep devotion to his deceased wife, and it might be challenging for him to serve a wealthy woman. But Basiatus had no concerns at all because the current Spartacus had no emotional attachments and obediently followed orders. So Basiatus summoned Spartacus to discuss the matter, and Spartacus agreed. He was no longer the rigid, uncompromising man. Now, he respected his boss and complied with instructions, since the gods had pointed him towards a new path. He wouldn't refuse any task especially one that involved serving someone else. Even so, Lucretia still had some doubts and concerns. Since Sura's death, Spartacus had not pursued any relationships, and she worried about potential issues arising from that. Therefore, Lucretia decided to find him a woman in advance, to prevent any complications. That woman turned out to be the new slave, Mira. That night, when Spartacus returned to his room after training, he found a seductive woman lying on his bed. He didn't hesitate and asked her to leave here. The next day, Lucretia asked about the incident, and Mira, feeling timid and wronged, truthfully explained the situation. Lucretia, upon hearing this, became extremely displeased and ordered to go over again tonight. Make sure to handle this matter well, otherwise I'll have you commit suicide on the spot. On the other side, the former war god Crixus has fully recovered and returned to the training ground. His charm remains, and Lucretia secretly met with him shortly after. Before long, Elithia once again arrived at the mansion. She confided in Lucretia about her desires. Having heard about the situation, she also wanted to secretly seek the services of the gladiator Crixus behind her husband's back. In fact, she had already suspected the relationship between Lucretia and Crixus, but she suggested that having one more person involved might yield better results. This drove Lucretia mad. Crixus was her exclusive male companion, how could she share him with someone else? Basiatus, wearing a puzzled expression, sought his wife so furious, not realizing that his wife had been involved in a secret affair with Crixus for many years. Poor Basiatus tried to convince his wife to agree to Alithia's request. After all, her husband Glaber was a powerful figure in politics, coupled with the wealth of a rich woman. With just one gladiator, we can please two influential individuals. In the future, we will gain both wealth and status. 
but he didn't notice Lucretia's terrifying expression at all. A malicious revenge plan was brewing in her mind. That night, Spartacus was in the midst of a pleasant dream. He felt someone touching him and abruptly woke up, only to find that it was Mira once again visiting him. Three days quickly passed, and the appointed date arrived. Before that, Lucretia repeatedly instructed Spartacus. The other party is of high status, so there's no need for words, just obedience. During the day, you are the champion gladiator of Capua. But tonight, you only need to be an obedient slave. After the maidservant had adorned her and put on the mask, the two of them eagerly began. However, at that moment, Lucretia suddenly pulled open the curtains and barged in, claiming that she had mistaken the person. Standing behind him was the rich woman herself. Both parties were instantly filled with shock and horror, and they unveiled each other's masks to see. Only then did they realize that they had just been intimate with their respective enemies. Spartacus, consumed by anger, was taken away by the soldiers. Unable to endure the constant arrogant mocking from the rich woman, Ilithia, in her fury, grabbed the woman's head and ruthlessly smashed it to the ground, killing her. This turn of events was completely unexpected, and the death of the rich woman would bring about a tremendous crisis. Initially, Lucretia only intended to humiliate Ilithia once, but she hadn't anticipated such rapid and drastic changes in the situation. Fortunately, the rich woman had been informed in advance to come alone, and her whereabouts were unknown to anyone. After discussing, the two of them decided to eliminate any traces of the rich woman. At this moment, Ilithia, who was overwhelmed with fear, lay in Lucretia's arms and obediently followed all of Lucretia's arrangements. She only wished to forever keep the truth of killing the rich woman a secret. Little did she know that from this moment onwards, the once arrogant Ilithia was completely at Lucretia's mercy and under her control.